Since his creation in 1928, Mickey Mouse has been in over 450 movies, TV shows and short films. Over the years he has gained a voice, Hot dog. lost a tail, won an Academy Award and even as a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Mickey has become an icon of animation and is recognised by old and young alike the world over. But how did the most successful cartoon character of all time become the face that launched an empire? Mickey's story started when Charles Mintz, Disney's senior illustrator, moved to a competitor taking his creation, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, with him. Disney had to literally go back to the drawing board. And on November the 18th, 1928, Walt Disney released the first film ever with synchronised pictures and sound. Mickey made his first appearance on the big screen as Steamboat Willie. Mickey was first created by traditional animation, commonly known as cell or hand-drawn animation. This old process involves animating on a light box and paper where each frame of Mickey was drawn or painted by hand on transparent pieces of cell and laid over a static background. Mickey's outline was drawn on the front of the cell in black while colours were painted on the back to eliminate visible brush strokes. In the original Mickey design, seen here in Plain Crazy, which didn't get released, he does not wear gloves or shoes. By the time Galloping Gaucho was made, Mickey had gained shoes and his eyes were visibly smaller. From the short cartoon The Osprey House onwards, Mickey wore white gloves so the animators drawing him could distinguish his hands from his body. From his first conception in 1927, Mickey went through many changes. High eyes to black ovals, yellow and white gloves and on and off again eyebrows. Shoes and other clothing came and went. However, the most significant change the mouse went through was his redesign shown in the 1935 film Pluto Judgment Day, in which his body now appeared in a more pear shape, allowing him to be more flexible. Mickey carried this design until 1938. In 1935, Disney started using Technicolor, a three-color camera which represented a major advancement in motion picture technology. Though it utilised many of the same principles already developed for two-colour photography, such as the use of beam splitting prisms, the Technicolor three-strip camera captured separate colour records into three strips of film. Mickey's first cartoon to be represented in Technicolor was a 1935 cartoon short, Band Concert. Around the same time, the multi-plane camera was invented by a former Disney animator, director Ub Ilverk. The multi-plane camera is a motion picture camera used in the traditional animation process that moves a number of pieces of artwork past the camera at various speeds and at various distances from one another. Even though the camera was brought out four years earlier, Disney himself first used it to make Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs in 1937 and then Pinocchio and the award winning Fantasia in 1940. My favourite type of animation used by Disney would be the old glass and then paint type caricatures. They had a grainy effect, it took a lot of effort, a lot of time, much better than the production made um, CGI effects that we get these days. Um, there is definitely still a demand for the traditional methods of animation used today. Um, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's like anything, if you, if you want to buy an old chair you go and buy an old, you know, an old Chippendale or something like that, you don't go out and buy the latest Ikea necessarily and it has a certain quality to it which you don't get from modern traditional modern methods rather than traditional methods. Mickey Mouse, he's evolved. He started off as Steamboat Willie and he's come through to what we know today. You know, even with his own fan club, the Mickey Mouse Club, um, you know, you see him he is the centre of he is, he is, he is the centre of, of Disney, you know, he's evolved around him. Um, but to me personally I think in the very early days, um, when he was a rabbit, even before he was Mickey Mouse. In the past 80 years, Mickey Mouse has appeared in many different guises. Perhaps the most drastic change came in 1939. Mickey appeared in a short cartoon, The Pointer, where he was given the look we all know and associate with the mouse today. His body shape changed, he had a more vibrant looking flesh tone to his face, and his eyes now had pupils. In 1940, Disney's Fantasia was released. The film was regarded by many as Walt Disney's masterpiece. After the release of Fantasia, Mickey started to appear in fewer Disney Studio films and his popularity started to decline with the emergence of other Disney characters. In 1955, in an attempt to rekindle Mickey's popularity, Walt Disney created a series called The Mickey Mouse Club. 
Mickey Mouse hosted this variety show with his club attended by kids called the Mouseketeers. Even though Mickey's last new production, The Simple Things, was in 1953, this television series gave Walt Disney the opportunity to re-release several of Mickey Mouse's animated shorts and the programme continued into the 1990s. Having been absent from the silver screen for 30 years, Mickey Mouse returned in 1983, taking the lead in Mickey's A Christmas Carol. Although CGI had been in use since 1976, it was decided for Mickey's cinematic return to animate him in his most popular 1940s style. In this film, although Mickey can be seen in Victorian style clothing for the character of Bob Cratchit, Mickey soon returned to his iconic look of red shorts with large buttons and yellow shoes. Invented in 1976, CGI, or computer generated imagery, started to use computers for creating moving images in animation. This type of animation uses a scan of models in certain keyframes, after which the computer will calculate and perform an interpolation between those frames to create movement. When the modelling and or animation is complete, the computer will render each frame individually. Disney's first use of CGI was a small segment in the 1982 film Tron. Disney's first extensive use of it though was in 1991, Beauty and the Beast, where the ballroom sequence was mixed between traditional animation and the Caps Pixar developed computer animation system. Mickey finally came of age and made his CGI produced debut in the much loved Mickey's Twice Upon a Christmas. This was his first incarnation using the latest production techniques and ended an era of traditionally made Mickey animation. My favourite animation used by Disney is CGI because it's more modern and it's one I grew up with. I also prefer the softer lines by the animated objects rather than the harsh drawn lines or the traditional methods. I don't feel there is always a demand for traditional methods as <clears throat> those who um, have liked it have grown up and they don't watch Disney anymore. Um, the evolution of Mickey Mouse has grown with the generations of those who are watching it. You see the very old sort of style, the black and white, the lack of colour in the like, 1920s version, and then to the 2000s with the very colourful and vibrant, growing with both technology and the people who are watching it. My favourite era of Mickey Mouse was the 2000s, that's the one I grew up with. I um, watched it on the TV, Disney Park. It's very colourful. It wasn't as frightening as the uh, <laughs> 1920s version. Mickey Mouse's appearance has been altered by time and technology. His creators and animators over the years have enabled and shaped his metamorphosis, while skillfully maintaining that which endures as the symbol of Disney. His silhouette is recognised around the world as the defining character of the Disney Corporation. He's recognised as Walt Disney's alter ego and represents the world of animation. As Walt Disney once said, I hope we never lose sight of one thing. That was all started by a mouse.